Masculinity is a set of attributes, values, and behaviors associated with being a man. It is a social construct that is distinct from biological sex. So masculinity, for example, is the expectation that men take bullets for women, that they provide and protect them, you know, that kind of thing. Is, is that what you're saying masculinity is? The association, the behaviors, the standards that we hold men to, what we think of as a good man. So what we think of as a man. All right. Okay. Fair enough. We're on the same page. We're on the same page. So far, so good. Being a man is a social construct associated with being a man. Masculinity is distinct from biological sex. Biological sex refers to a specific societal expectation of biological men that is enforced and policed by social construct men. Designating manhood as defined by sex, a narrow, inflexible script of emotion. What the? Masculinity is not masculinity itself, but a form of gendered behavior that occurs when expectations of manliness go wrong. Wait a second. That occurs when expectations of manliness go wrong. Behavior that occurs when expectations of man... I'm going to have to start writing some goddamn kind of diagram for all this shit. All right, that's it. This needs to be whiteboarded. One debt to society later. Okay. I counted at least three definitions for toxic masculinity, some of which were mutually exclusive from each other. And also, that first definition of toxic masculinity, the way he defines it, the way he describes it, it means that all masculinity is toxic. And I'll go through the logic, the steps in the logic, to come to that conclusion. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all of his definitions of toxic masculinity on my whiteboard. Masculinity is a set of attributes, values, and behaviors associated with being a man. Masculinity. Note associated. That's a weasel word, if ever there was one. The term toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. A narrow, inflexible script of being a man that emphasizes reliance on aggressive behavior, de-emphasizes other more positive traits that are sometimes coded masculine, and dismisses any and all traits for men that are coded feminine. When the term toxic masculinity is used, it is not an assertion that men are naturally violent. Not an assertion that men are naturally violent. They just teach each other to be violent. It is also not an assertion that all aspects of masculinity are naturally toxic. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Confronting toxic elements of masculinity often runs into the problem of misunderstanding the concept. I don't think we misunderstand the concept. Or ignoring the concept for fear of self-reflection. Fear of self-reflection. <laughs> it, it's, it's ironic this guy is saying that. I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this video trying to get people over the hurdle of what is and is not toxic masculinity because that seems to be the biggest roadblock in the discourse. The reason why I'm using the whiteboard now is because all of his explanations do not make any sense when you look at them. They are, they are a foundation of shifting sand. So I needed to write them all out because I knew there was crazy uh, sleight of hand going on, linguistic sleight of hand going on. So that's why we're that's why we got the why, why we're why we're dealing with the whiteboard. Most who reject toxic masculinity would conversely praise other traits that society often codes as masculine. Here we go. Did you did you catch that? Because it's actually critically important. He says often codes as masculine for those positive traits that he says aren't toxic, are masculine but not toxic masculinity. They are often coded as masculine. Now, if he believes they were innately masculine, he wouldn't say they were coded by society as masculine. What he means by that is that they are erroneously coded by society as masculine, unless he's going to say that these are traits that men are more likely to show than women. These are positive traits that men are more likely or exclusively likely to show relative to women, and he's not going to do that. That's not why he used coded, ma coded masculine. He used it as a way of slipping something under the radar, that he's not actually referring to masculine traits. What he is referring to when he talks about 
de-emphasizes positive manhood or positive masculine traits, what he's actually referring to are positive gender neutral traits. Otherwise, he wouldn't have used the term encoded masculine. He would have simply said masculine. All right, I'm going to do a little Venn diagram. I'm going to use colors and I'm going to use stereotypical colors. Women, men, gender neutral. Okay, now we know what toxic masculinity is. Toxic masculinity is a social, social expectations enforced by men on men to be aggressive. And it de-emphasizes gendered, positive gender neutral traits, because we already went through that. When you say something is coded masculine, you mean it's not innately masculine. That's <laughs> the only reason why you use that weasel term. And femininity. So toxic masculinity is everything left over when you take out gender neutral traits and when you take out femininity. Okay, so let's take out gender neutral traits. Okay, there we go. Those are all the encompassing traits that are positive and gender neutral. Those aren't toxic masculinity. And now we have feminine traits. Those aren't toxic masculinity. But what are you left with? Toxic masculinity is not gender neutral traits, positive gender neutral traits, or femininity. Well, you're left with Negative gender neutral traits and all masculine traits. This equals toxic masculinity. Wow, I wonder why people are thinking you're saying that toxic masculinity is all masculinity because that's exactly what you are saying. Unless you want to take back that weasel word coded masculine, which means you don't actually believe they really are masculine. You actually believe that there are traits that are primarily or exclusively expressed by men that are positive, that women don't are less likely to express or don't express at all. Are you going to go there? Are you going to actually say that? Are you going to get in front of a camera and say, yes, there are traits intrinsic to men that primarily are expressed by men or even exclusively expressed by men and they are positive. Okay. <laughs> because all you're left with at this point in time is that toxic masculinity is aggressive. It is not positive gender neutral traits and it is not femininity. The only thing left when you take out those two things are masculinity and negative gender neutral traits. That's toxic masculinity. The Good Men Project describes it thusly. Toxic masculinity is a narrow and repressive description of manhood, designating manhood as defined by violence, sex, status, and aggression. New definition. Manhood is violence, aggression, hypersexuality, and emotionlessness. Where are the positive male traits that you said? These, uh, well, you said positive encoded male masculine traits. Where are they in this new definition? Because I thought you said that toxic masculinity means stopping other men from engaging in the positive male traits or coded masculine traits. Well, now they disappeared. Now you're just talking about everything being masculine, being aggression, hypersexuality, emotionlessness, and everything feminine being positive. So now you've just created a dichotomy, a very strong dichotomy in which bad things are coded masculine and good things are coded feminine and toxic masculinity is just for some reason wanting to do those bad things, which incidentally, those aren't cultural traditions. Those aren't cultural messaging. That, that, that has nothing to do with what culture tells men. It has nothing to do with what culture tells men. You are lying about our culture. This resembles, I don't know, Burman warlords, Burmese warlords, maybe the culture of Burmese warlords, like the culture of a, any other kind of warlord throughout all of human history. 
This isn't my culture, and it's not my culture's messaging. And you're lying if you say it is. There were, in our culture, and I'm pretty sure most cultures around the world, men are judged by how well they take care of the vulnerable. Their elders, their wives, women in general, children. That's how they're judged. They're judged in terms of being able to protect and provide for those individuals who are more vulnerable in our societies. And if you're going to say that isn't so, that isn't almost a universal cultural expectation of men, you are wrong. And that's, that's, that's just the first lie. I mean, we've already seen this weasel word, coded masculine, which really means, actually, uh, it really means you think that those coded masculine behaviors are actually gender neutral. And now we've seen a direct lie about culture. Thank you. You're, you're really establishing, you're really establishing rapport with me, with your lies and your weasel words. It's the cultural ideal of manliness, where strength is everything, while emotions are a weakness. What men think about emotions is not that emotions are a weakness, but that indulging your emotions, not being able to put your emotions aside, not being able to manage your emotions, are a weakness. And they're a weakness because it is selfish. Do you know why, as adults, when we go to the supermarket and we see something that's out of our price range, we don't throw, our, throw ourselves on the floor and tantrum until a manager comes over and reduces the price so we can buy it? You know why we don't do that? Because we control our emotions. And we control our emotions because we consider the emotional well-being of those around us who have to listen to us tantruming, have to be frightened because there's an adult flopping on the floor. All of that, we consider the perspective of other people and we control our emotions. Not controlling your emotions is selfish. So the idea is that men control their emotions so that they can better serve other people. So they can better serve those aforementioned women, elderly children and protect and provide for them. That's what men think about emotions, that it is weak to be unable to control them because that is selfish. It is selfish to expect everybody to abide by your emotions more than you're willing to abide by them. And in fact, it's not good men who are incapable of controlling their emotions. It's tyrants and bullies and criminals. Okay. So don't give me this shit. Don't give it to me. That's not what men think about emotions. And I want to point to this and I want people to put a pin in it because he's groping towards something. And you know what that something is? He is going to go from emotionless and emotions are weakness to something more sinister. So instead of seeing it as men control their emotions in order to protect and provide for women in order to make sure that they don't use their strength in negative ways, because that's what happens when someone strong loses control over their emotions. They hurt people. So they want to make sure not to do that. This emotionless thing is going to move towards being uh, unable to understand or appreciate the viewpoints of others rather than being willing to set aside your own emo emotion, emotional landscape in order to serve others, in order to sacrifice for others. That's what he's going to grope towards. Toxic masculinity positions masculinity in general as superior to femininity. Wrong! Men are superior to the people that they are expected to serve, to pr protect and provide for. Is Are we situating masculinity as superior when we hound a boyfriend for failing to take a bullet for his girlfriend, for just panicking and running off and thinking she was safe so he just took care of himself and he spends months being dragged through the media? Are we considering women in that instance, his girlfriend in that instance, to be inferior to him? No, that's not how it works. Femininity is considered to be something that you serve in women by men. That vulnerability, that need to be protected and provided for and saved, that's something that men feel they serve in women. But when men express it, it goes back to that whole emotion, not taking, not taking responsibility for your emotions being weakness. You're not embodying the role that men are supposed to have to set their emotions aside so that they can better protect, provide, and serve women, children, and the elderly. That's how it works. 
Femininity is not considered inferior to masculinity. Femininity is considered to be the reason for why men sacrifice. And it's fucking hilarious because the way that they consider femininity to be quote unquote inferior is identical to a lot of feminist framing about how women are constantly victims of society. No, it's, it's just that, but, but apparently it's not because women are innately weak, despite having been victims of society for how many more, how many, how many millennia now? It's just because, um, they're just too nice for their own good or something. Well, it's basically the same psychological concept. You're calling women the eternal victims of society. You're basically calling them inferior to men by definition. The term toxic masculinity is designed to describe not masculinity itself, but a form of gendered behavior that occurs when expectations of manliness go wrong. I, I don't know why he feels like he needs to define toxic masculinity a third time. A uh, form of gendered behavior that occurs when expectations of manliness go wrong. Okay, presumably the gendered behavior is the toxic masculinity. So the expectations of manliness are good. Well, who's doing the good expectations of manliness? Because we all know that it's not men. It's not culture and it's not society, all of which are responsible for toxic masculinity. So whose expectations? Who are the ones who are making these expectations that are positive, that go wrong and cause toxic masculinity? Who could they be? Nobody is calling all baseball players the Red Sox, and nobody is calling every expression of masculinity toxic. Yes, you are. And you know how I know? Because your original definition of toxic masculinity boils down to men enforce on men traits that de-emphasize positive gender neutral traits or feminine traits. So they force men to not engage in positive gender neutral traits, which you said using weasel words were positive coded masculine traits, not innately masculine traits. And like I said, put this guy's feet to the fire, make him tell you what innately masculine traits are positive. And by innately masculine, that means that men express these traits, they're the majority, or they express them exclusively, they're exclusively expressed by men. Get them to define them. Otherwise, what he means by toxic masculinity is masculinity. It should be noted, however, that this absolutely does not mean that there exist toxic men and non-toxic men, as if they are neatly divided up like baseball teams. <laughs> okay, this is, this is a gem. Okay, all right. So there are non-toxic behaviors that men can engage in, and there are toxic behaviors that men can engage in, but there are not non-toxic men because men exist on a spectrum of toxicity. Even the very best men are still slightly toxic. You know, slightly toxic, like Chernobyl generations after, this is just only slightly toxic, but they're still toxic or the less toxic. There's a spectrum, you know, toxic, high toxicity, low toxicity. Men are somewhere along that spectrum. They never escape toxicity, you see. <laughs> so there are non-toxic, there is non-toxic masculinity, but there are no non-toxic men. <laughs> it means that some behavior is toxic and some behavior is not. Everyone is susceptible to negative behavior traits, even those making a conscious effort not to do so. How about you stop maligning their gender identity? Hmm? How about you stop doing that? Because here's what I'm noticing. If men take anything positive from being men, so if they say, well, men do this, you'll say, but what about the women? Okay? So men can have nothing for themselves. You'll say, well, those positive things are coded masculine. They're not innately masculine. They can have nothing for themselves. 
Nothing good for themselves. No, no way of being useful by being a man. None of that. It's not allowed. It's not acceptable. That's what they're responding to. That you are saying there is nothing good about masculinity. And you are saying it. Even though you think you're not. You have to actually define an innate masculine trait that is positive. Which means an innate trait that men display more or exclusively relative to women. Do that. Then you can say that you don't think masculinity is toxic. I think at best you think that there are aspects of masculinity that are neutral. The term patriarchy sounds fairly neutral and scientific in language and contains no scary words like toxic. Naming evil after fathers. But when the topic of patriarchy is brought up, the same men who dismiss the concept of toxic masculinity cry out and dismiss patriarchy as well. Yes, because the feminine definition of patriarchy is wrong. It has never been proven. And in fact has been disproven. It can't be called a theory, patriarchy theory, because it does no, it has no predictive value. In fact, it has negative predictive value. Usually the opposite thing happens than what you would predict from feminist patriarchy theory. So at best, it's conjecture. And more honestly, it's just out, flat out lies, pretending to be scientific. So I can imagine why when a feminist starts talking about their favorite lie about men, men get a little defensive. You know, maybe you could introspect on that a bit. And remember, patriarchy has never been proven as feminist posit. Po Feminists propose that it is, which is a society that unfairly benefits men over women. The word is not the problem. The words could be anything, and the same defensiveness would occur. If we changed the word toxic to something less harsh, like bad, the same people who exclaim, Oh, so you think all men are toxic? would instead say, Oh, so you think all men are bad? Are you stupid? Like, does everybody who fucking comments on this and says, wow, you're, you're such a genius. I'm going to upvote you. Are they stupid too? What kind of argument is that? If, if I call Julie toxic, why does she, I mean, okay, I won't call her toxic. I won't say that Julie is toxic. I'll say that she's bad. Oh, she's still getting upset. Why? I, I changed it. I changed the term because it's wrong. Because you are still calling all men something bad, something negative. How's that? Do you understand that? So if the same problems apply to toxic masculinity, they also apply to bad masculinity. In other words, you are saying masculinity is nothing but bad and maybe something neutral. That's the problem that they're having. No matter what negative term. You could call it corrupt masculinity. You could call it contaminated masculinity. You could call it cancerous masculinity. The same logic, the same problem in logic applies. You are calling all men that. Hegemonic masculinity describes a form of masculinity that is narrow, but not specifically toxic masculinity. Traditional masculinity ideology describes some of what toxic masculinity is, but does not describe it specifically enough Okay, so you want to use these other terms, except they're just not aggressive enough. They're, they're just not, you know, they don't make you feel, make men feel bad enough, essentially. So you have to use the term toxic masculinity. And you can't address any of the real criticism for it. The fact that you are actually referring to masculinity, because once again, identify an innate masculine trait that's positive. Do that. And then you can honestly say that you are not referring to all masculinity when you say toxic masculinity. Also, jargon terms that require a second definition just to understand the meaning of one of the words do not lend themselves to educating the masses. How many definitions have you just given for toxic masculinity? Like three or four? Like seriously, if your term toxic masculinity is lending people to interpret it as referring to all masculinity as toxic. And you really do know, you, you could right off the top of your head, you could say a positive trait that's innately masculine. 
you know, you could really do that. You could really prove that you don't think that all masculinity is toxic, okay? If you really do think there is non-toxic forms of masculinity, use a different way of referring to it because this one isn't working, okay? But here's the thing, and this is the problem that I have. Who gets to decide what is toxic masculinity and what isn't? Because even if you think that you determine what is and is not toxic, who voted you in charge? Where's the oversight committee? What, when was the election? When were you voted in as the moral authority to decide what is and is not toxic? And when is the next election so I can vote you out? Is there some sort of, do, do, do I, does I as a member of the public have any kind of oversight over you in your declarations, your moral authoritarian declarations about gender identity? Do I have any oversight over you? I don't think so. <laughs> At least I wasn't informed about the election. Furthermore, again, even this academic term would eventually be rejected by the same people who reject the term patriarchy. They are bullshit terms. They are not proven. And you have basically lied about culture. You've lied about men. You've lied even about what you believe because you don't believe that there's positive masculine traits. Otherwise you wouldn't call them coded masculine. You would call them just masculine or innately, or innately masculine. So you're lying about culture. You're lying about men. You're lying about yourself. And people pick up on that. And then they say, well, okay, you lie about everything. Why should I agree with any of your terms and also your presumption of moral authority over me? Some attempts to use a different term are meant in good faith as a means of making it more palatable, though that seems an unlikely result. And some attempts are made in bad faith in hopes of removing discussion about toxic masculinity altogether. You can rename a horse turd whatever you want. You could call it... A, an equine bait apple apple croissant people are still not going to eat them men invented the car you know listing men's achievements is irrelevant because nobody is dismissing said achievements or attacking men oh okay Ooh, wait maybe, maybe we have a solution to my question is this what you think positive male trait or positive innate male trait is their achievement their creativity their innovation? Is that a positive male trait that's exclusively or mostly expressed by men? Or do you think that men conspired to prevent women from expressing this trait? Therefore, it's merely just a coded masculine trait. See how that works? What about toxic femininity? The early feminist movement wrote a lot about what we might now call toxic femininity, meaning the results of society placing a great deal of pressure on women to look and behave in a similarly idealized way. Let me explain something to you, renegade cut. You have just attempted to equate things that, two things that do not equate. Once again, toxic masculinity as defined by you was social expectations enforced by men on men. Okay? which presumably is just men's expectations enforced on men by men. What you define in toxic femininity was not social expectations enforced by women on women or women's expectations enforced on women by women. Okay? So you attempted to pass off something that isn't equal as equality, and it wasn't. So once again, this is, this is a sleight of heart. I mean, how many lies... How many sleights of hand, how many weasel words do we have to, do we have to endure before we recognize that you are, you don't have my best interests at heart as a woman, and you don't have, certainly don't have men's best interests at heart. What are you really trying to do? But let, let's, let's just look again at the number of lies. Culture, our culture tells men to be brutal, hypersexual, and emotionless, or uncaring. Our culture tells men to do that way. No, it doesn't. Not our culture, not any culture around the world. Maybe culture of warlords does that. Maybe. Not even gang culture because they still abide by chivalry and codes of honor. Okay? So you are lying about culture. You said that men think that emotions are weakness. No, they think 
that not having control over your emotions is a weakness. And they think it's a weakness because it's selfish. Okay, that's another lie. So you lied about what culture thinks, you lied about what men think, and then you lied about what you think. Because you actually don't think that there are any positive masculine traits. You probably don't even think there are any neutral masculine traits. You only think there are toxic ones and ones that are coded masculine, which means women were not allowed to express them. And then the weasel words, weaseling emotionless into uncaring, weaseling <laughs> coded masculine, trying to slip that one under the radar. And then your multiple definitions, some of which contradict each other. I don't even know where you're going with this one. I have to sit down and really think about it. The fact that the term toxic masculinity has a qualifier, toxic, is evidence in and of itself that those who use the term either in academic settings or in conversation do not believe all masculinity is toxic. Once again, I refer you to your original definition of toxic masculinity. Men teaching other men not to engage in gender neutral positive behaviors, which you refer to as coded masculine, but I don't think you think that there are any positive masculine traits. So you just mean gender neutral traits that are positive and femininity. When you take out gender neutral positive traits and feminine traits, you are left with masculine traits and negative gender neutral traits. And these are the things that are toxic masculinity. Because that's how words work. Ha, that's how words work. That's, that's really rich coming from you. If you want to prove toxic masculinity exists, please go ahead and say this, as it is the most blatant example and proof of toxic masculinity, the policing of what is and is not properly masculine. Oh no, I agree. I actually agree with you. Beta male cuck? That's essentially saying that you don't appeal to women enough, therefore you're lesser. That's what it means. I mean, if you're a beta male, you're not an alpha male. And what's the difference between an alpha male and a beta male? Usually whether or not you appeal to women. And what's the difference between a cuck and a man who isn't a cuck? Well, he keeps his wife sexually satisfied. So in both scenarios, the axis around which you orbit the judgment for the man is women. I, I'm really shocked that this man doesn't like those. I mean, he has his own terms for beta and, uh, and cuck. Toxically masculine and patriarchy. Patriarchal. Yeah, that, that's how he defines men who fail to, fail to satisfy women morally. See, it's the same thing. You know, a beta man isn't attractive, sexually attractive to women. A cuck isn't sexually attractive to his wife. But in both cases, you are defining the worth of the man by the woman. This guy does the same thing, except he's defining the worth of the man in a more moral dimension. You know, a dimension in which you serve women's victimhood, in which case the patriarch causes women's victimhood and toxic masculinity perpetuates women's victimhood. Ipso facto, when he says patriarch, he means cuck. And when he says toxic masculinity, he means beta male. Just, just think, cogitate on it a bit. I know it's a bit of a high level idea. All caught up? Excellent. Let's talk about Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> no. And also, I'm not going into Conan the Barbarian. I'm, I'm just not. I am not. Because I know I have already done this. I already did it in a, in a rant zerker. Badger live streams, if you want to see it. Badger live streams over there somewhere. I'm not going to go through it again. Basically, he just distorts the message of Conan in order to support his point, which is, which is really interesting because, to be quite frank, the message of Conan is that this brutal warlord type, what, what Conan was, he evolves into someone who is driven by justice through a relationship with women, with a woman. So literally it's a story 
of a man overcoming what this guy would refer to as toxic masculinity if he didn't think all masculinity was toxic. <laughs> and he distorts that into supporting all of this spaghetti, all of it. I mean, Renegade Cut doesn't realize it, but he's just masculine. He's just posturing. He's posturing by creating a hierarchy with himself on top. You remember I said that his word for cuck is patriarch, his word for beta male is toxically masculine? Well, he's just creating his own little hierarchy with other men on the bottom and himself on top because he is the one, he is the moral alpha who does right by the women. That's what he's doing. So this is mostly just posturing. This is explaining why he deserves the women and other men don't. He either, I mean, think two motivations I'm getting, he either really hates men, and he's one of those guys who's just totally shattered that he can't direct his hatred at a scapegoat group like black men or disabled men or gay men. So he just directs it at all men. All men. Or he's using our native, innate hatred of men's brutality. Because we, as culture, as people, everybody around the world hates brutal men. I hate the idea of brutal men. I mean, you know, I guess there's some romance to the brutal man who you tame as a woman, but for the most part, we hate brutal men. We hate men who rape. We hate men who enact brutality on people for no reason, for selfish reasons, period. We hate them. And he's using that hatred to try to destroy society. Epilogue. This is bullshit.